we're going to talk about the top in the hangar episodes, in our opinions anyway, on this episode of the Taking Off podcast. Hello and welcome to the Taking Off podcast. I'm Dan Milliken. And I'm Christy in my cozy uh, corner here. Yes, for those who are able to watch <laughs> this on YouTube, Christy is all blanketed up. It's like 30 or 40 degrees outside, and Dan likes it at a maximum of like 45 degrees Fahrenheit okay. in this room. To be fair, I do like it cold. <laughs> However, uh, no, this building has its own thing going and has no control of mine. Yeah. Okay, so Christy, we're going to talk about... Uh, our favorite in the hangers and why, but the reason why we're going to do this is because on February uh, 15, 16, and 17, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're going to be back in the studio in Fort Worth, Texas to uh, shoot our season eight, eight seasons, Christy, of in the hangar. Yeah, that's a lot of uh, years. It's not eight years of doing it, but the first year we did this was 2018 2018 the sum, summer in august yeah it was like august september or yeah it was august 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 of 2018 it was early august and we shot 14 episodes in one day i am i, I had no idea what i was getting myself into <laughs> no you didn't and uh and the, and the way this all came about was because i mean at the time that we shot in august i want to say we had 800 subscribers yeah, it was totally. not that many. No, mm -hmm. no, it was. This was the taking off channel was brand new, and it was you know we were we were trying something new and different, and there wasn't anything out there like in the hangar. I don't think there even is still. No, there's not because it takes a lot of work and a lot of money to yeah. to pull that off. It's a lot of work, you guys. I I simultaneously um, am excited about filming in the hangar. And I also dread it because <laughs> right. it's very exhausting. It is. And we're uh, doing a lot of work right now prepping for it, trying to get the right guests and everything else. If you'd like to come to Fort Worth and sit in the studio audience, we'd love to have you. So for information, go to our community page on YouTube at the Taking Off channel. We'll have details about what airports are closest, where the hotels are, and all that kind of stuff. Also, as we get closer, I'll go ahead and list up kind of a rough schedule and who's talking so you can at least have an idea of who you might want to come and watch. But these times are subject, heavily subject to change as we get into it. And they do change. And they do change. You can also go to our Facebook uh, the taking off page at Facebook for details as well. And also you can hit that I'm going button if you are coming. So at least, at least we kind of have somewhat of a head count going in so we know how much pizza to get. Honestly, my favorite part about in the hangar is interacting with the fans and yeah. the, the people that actually come and, and sit there to support us and whatnot. That's my favorite. Yeah, me too. So if you can come, we'd love to have you. So Christy, 2018, on a August Saturday, um, with a full volunteer crew, I got the studio to to let us in there for nothing on a Saturday. So I, I spent actually zero dollars to make that happen. We shot our first round of episodes for In the Hangar, season it was, one. Yeah, it was rough. I had no clue what I was doing. Most days I still don't know what I'm doing when it when it comes to this In the, the Hangar stuff. But <laughs> We had only met face-to-face -face like two times by the time we, we were in studio. We had talked a lot. We had flown We'd together. We'd talked a lot. We'd flown yeah, together flown once. Together. And then I'd, but before we flew together, I actually flew into um, Northwest Regional for a pancake thing. Right. You that was the first time I, we met face-to-face. -face. That was when we met. We actually flew together twice. Before the in the hangar. Oh, I think you're right. Because we did the thing for taking off, and then we did the um, photo mission thing. Because remember, you were my first paid. Right, but had we not done? I thought we had already done one season. No, I don't think so. Nope. Okay. You were no. You you were like, hey, because when we did the taking off thing, you were like, hey, if you pass your commercial check right, I oh. want to be your first. Customer. paying like yeah. you know whatever and i was like okay and then we did and then it was after that that you okay. you said hey I, i've got this idea and i again once again which, i was like okay which if we're doing a memories of in the hangar episode here like we are for the podcast i will tell you this something you may or may not know oh the very first episode of in the hangar um we didn't shoot them in order by the way right because the first one we actually aired 
was uh, emergencies. Was emergencies. The second one was Josh Flowers, but I think the actual one that we shot first was like episode five or six. But that first episode, again, getting a total volunteer crew, volunteer everything. Um, in the camera world, in my world, in video production, you have what we call the double tap or the double clutch. And what happens is you hit the button to record, but you kind of accidentally hit it twice and you don't realize it. Oh, yeah. We do. We do the double flip on changing frequencies on the radio all the time. <laughs> yeah. So so on the guest camera, he he double tapped. And oh, so we had no. nothing. It turned on and off. And so I had to, to piece together that first episode. You never see a close up of the person the main guy it's always either the wide shot or me and it's like oh my goodness wow yeah i didn't know that that's really funny yeah i, I yeah so i remember that the it magic was, of television editing uh the other other early memory i have was you know the taking off channel as as our regular fans know was an experiment for me i wanted to experiment on building a youtube channel see what works see what doesn't and everything else and that's actually what led to me asking you to come on because i actually wanted to see what a female host would do versus a male host and that first season was mostly either you or me because i wanted to see i didn't think of us like going on together I know. And now we like we I think we realized by like season three, we would we did some together. And I found that you and I had a good back and forth rapport. And I'll be honest, like it gets really exhausting and tiring when you're just sitting up there with the, you're the only one carrying the water. You're the only one carrying on the conversation. You're like, what do I say next? And, you know, it's so it's so much better having both of us up there being able to talk about it, bounce things off of each other while you're talking to the guest about something. I'm thinking of the next question. I just think it works. It does. And and we went to, for the most part, a, 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 a co-host situation. You know, the left seat, right seat, if you want. Um, I'm Pat Sajak, and you're like my Vanna. <laughs> That's it, exactly. <laughs> and, um, but if you go back to the very first 14 episodes, you'll find it's either one of us or the other. Um, I think there may have been one episode at the very end where we kind of did them together. Because we were both super tired, and yeah. we were like, okay, if we have you and me, it's like two half people. It was, it was something kind of unplanned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so that those, those are my earliest memories. W what are your earliest memories? I remember, uh, like, my earliest memory was I have no clue what I'm doing. And I remember all the lights and everything. And I was just like, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I had no clue what I was doing. But I was like, I'm just going to have a conversation. I kind of had to put myself in that mental mindset. But I remember being a lot less talkative, a lot more, like, interview reportery type whatever right. and you had to cook kind of coach me through you it that, yeah. you were like hey just relax just talk and then you started filming kind of like we i'd be like all right thank you for watching in the hangar and then i'd turn <laughs> around and i'd be talking to the guests like you and i talk right. now and unbeknownst to me you'd still be rolling yeah yeah well, I, that wasn't until like season three and right. it's actually when when asked what episode sticks in my mind the most? It's it's that one that I did it. So <laughs> what happened was I kept trying to how can I get Christy to not be the reporter and just be herself because like we're talking right now, you're it's awesome. And so uh, I had instructed the crew to keep rolling, and I, I purposely did a false ending, and the episode was on fear shenanigans no fear of flying i know i'm saying shenanigans <laughs> i can't, you did that on purpose i didn't realize you did that on purpose oh, absolutely i thought you were just like like just hadn't stopped rolling and then you just kind of kept rolling because oh, we were no, talking no 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 oh, i did it on shenanigans. purpose shenanigans okay yeah so it was with dr jeremiah riggins i remember and we were talking about fear and i told the crew beforehand i said guys i'm gonna do a false close but keep it rolling so there you go. Okay. Well, and it was one of my confessions favorite. Confessions on taking off. My favorite early episodes. <laughs> that That's the one I wrote down, number one. Wow. Okay. Well, my, one of my favorites, I don't really have like a which one's the most favorite, but some of the ones that stuck out of my mind when you asked yeah. me, um, obviously the DPE videos with the Joes, mm -hmm. um, not one or the other, but like kind of collectively all of them, like the slips and skids and some of the different ones, because that information is so helpful for people who are growing up in the, you know, student pilot arena. You know, so many times we, we, um, 
a lot of the times that we're scared going into check rides is we don't know what to expect. And having actual DPEs come on and talk about what it's like to sit with a DPE, I think it's it's just absolutely invaluable. Yeah, I, I hope so. And and uh, Slips and Skids is actually the third video or, uh, episode that I wrote down. You know, that yes. one um, came about, it was like season three or four. I had just taken my CFI initial with Joe Casey. And when the check ride was complete, he showed me this little illustration with that foam plane of the difference between a slip and a skid. And it was like, boom, my mind yeah. was blown. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Sometimes there are just every now and then there are people or experiences out there that just kind of bring all that book knowledge together. And it it does. It's, it's mind blown. Um, that, that video is the most consistent performer on the channel as far as week in and week out. Because usually you you launch a video, you release a video, you're going to get X number of views right away, and then they taper off. And they taper <laughs> off pretty quick. And this one is a diagonal line. It, it gets the same views count consistently well, yeah, because week it's, after week, it's month helpful. after month. It's informational. You know, yeah. it, this is information that's never going to be, you know, like some of the news videos and stuff that we do, it's relevant and then it's not. But slips and skids, that's always going to be relevant. So another video that I think is really captivating is Dan Bass. The, yeah, I have that one down. That's wow, my number two. Golly, you and I are just yeah in sync there. And, and again, it's captivating. It's relevant. It's relevant to all of us forever. And I think that's why that video did and continues to do well. Yes. And it, it is our most popular studio in the hangar that we've done. Absolutely. And the interesting thing about the Dan Bass video that I think about now is, is a, a tinge of regret. Because when we were rolling, most of our in the hangars up to that point were 20 minutes at the most. You know, maybe right. 25 I remember getting the signal from our floor director that we were over 40 minutes and I needed to wrap it up. It was like 40 minutes. And I no, pan- you got to let it flow, dude. Panicked, let it flow naturally. I, I panicked and closed us out at the end of that video. If you go back and watch it, you kind of see it. And there were a lot of questions left. You know, Dan Bass had wanted to talk about, you know, the equipment he now carries and and more about, you know, the aftermath. Yeah. And I <clears throat> wish that I just kept talking. Yeah. When it's captivating, let it be captivating. You know, it's those videos that should only be 10 minutes, but then they go on for 20 or 25. That's a different situation. But this, I agree, this is one of those. But it's a learning experience. Learning. Yeah, I learned. Um, One of the videos I thought was really great that is really silly, and this is just a personal favorite of <laughs> mine, is the, the YouTuber's video because we just, we laughed so much during that. Like with that. all eight of us? Yes. Oh, my gosh. It was just we got up there and it was talking just like this. We there was no interviewing or anything like that. It was just kind of the, a roundtable discussion. But I re- I just remember my cheeks and my face hurting from laughing <laughs> right. so much. I forgot about that one actually. And we had like three Brian's up there and like yep. you know uh, Josh and you know us and it was just it was a really really good time. That was a good time. Um, I thought you were going to say the speech jammer episode. No, I mean, that kind of goes into it. I thought about that one, but honestly, this one was a lot. This one was a lot better because we were catching up. We were just, it was like, it was like all of us were just sitting around a, you know, fireplace and just catching up and laughing and having fun. Just a bunch of friends. And that just felt really good to me. Well, going back, one of the ones that sticks out in my mind, going back to the very beginning, the, the first time we did this in the 14 episodes. I knew that, you know, well, we had 800 subscribers. We needed to grow. And the best way to grow was to collaborate with people that had a much bigger channel. And one of the channels I'd started following was Aviation 101. Right. Actually, it was Mr. Aviation 101. Yeah, it used to be Mr. And uh, Josh had just crossed the 100,000 subscribers. I remember that. And I reached out to him. I knew he was in New Braunfels, and I thought... You know, I'm nobody at 900, 800 subscriber video channel. You know, I, I reached out. I, I don't remember how I found his info, whatever, but I did. I, and I emailed him, said, would you want to come up and be on the show? And he said, yes. Yeah. 
I was surprised. And that's how we became friends. With no, Josh no, Lawrence. no. He, I, I, the story goes on. Okay. So then that Saturday morning, I'm like so excited. I'm going to have Josh. Josh calls me or texts me. I can't remember. And he says that um, his plane has the avionics have gone out and he's having to, to, to turn back and go back. And at that point, I my heart sinks and I'm like, we're not going to get Josh Flowers on the show. This really, really sucks. But he continues and says, I'm going to go back and have to jump in my car, so I'll be late. Yeah. And he drove up. He did. He I, drove I remember up that, yeah. And was in the very first. And so um, that just blew me away. Yeah. No, that Josh is one of the most genuinely nice people ever. He's busy, but we we like between all of us and you know this this like collaborative group that we have now um it's really not to get too sappy but we've really blossomed like our friendship and stuff and we'll text each other when things are going on and we'll go weeks or months without talking but then the minute that we need each other we're there you know it's just and it all came from that he he's just honestly one of the most genuinely nice people yeah. i've ever met the fact that he he came up on his own dime you know, his own time. The, the The drive is a three and a half hour drive. It's it's not just, you know, crossing yeah. town. But he, he did it and came on to a nothing channel to do this. Yeah. And, and it just meant the world to me. Yeah. Well, speaking of YouTubers and um, joining us, uh, another one of my favorites or a group of favorites is uh, Brian. Brian Turner. Yeah. yeah. When, he, when he comes on and hijacks our episodes, it's just... It's tomfoolery and fun. It's light and um, it brings just a, another dimension to our episodes, which I appreciate. Um, I'm very much into humor and laughing and I am a firm believer that laughter is the best medicine kind of thing. And Brian always brings that to the table. Brian Turner is one of my favorite people to hang around with. Oh my gosh, 100%. He, yeah. <laughs> he's one of my favorite people to fly with because you just, you never know what you're going to get. Like, even in our most serious, um, you know, <laughs> flights, he somehow, I never know if he's joking or not. I'll right. just say that, you know. Um, you know, we've done some videos together where he and I were flying and people think that it's staged or whatever. And I promise you every single thing that like my reactions in, in those videos is 100 percent genuine. This is the type of friendship that Brian and I have. Hey, Christy, um, are you busy on Saturday? Because I want to go fly with you, but I can't tell you why, but we're going to video it. And I just say, okay. And then before I know it, he's whipping out a pee bottle, you know, right, or, or right. whatever. Like, it's just stuff like that. But that's the kind of relationship that we've kind of fostered. And um, and those are, those are some of my favorite episodes. You know, and that just speaks to the fact that the aviation community is, is a lot like that. It's... It is really, really cool how, you know, most of the aviation community, you can, it's just instant friendship and it's instant camaraderie. It's Absolutely. The camaraderie. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you come for the planes, you stay for the people. It's so true. 100%. So, um, all right. Uh, we've talked a lot about the, the, the ancient in the hangars. What about the more recent ones? What stick out? Um... <laughs> well, uh, the last one I have on my list is not necessarily a favorite, but for whatever reason, it sticks out in my brain is when you and Carrie LaFleur um, <laughs> <laughs> caught me completely off guard. You told me that we were going to be talking about a specific topic. and Ferry I, piloting. Right, ferry piloting. So, like, I get in my in the hangar, like, all right, here we go with my microphone. And then you, you drop that bomb on me that I was going to be jumping out of an airplane, and I just— the reason why it sticks out in my head is because for the first time really ever doing this, I was uh, like, uh, my brain went like this <laughs> and I didn't know what to say. And the reaction was just so, so genuine. <laughs> it was so painfully genuine. And you left all of that in there. And I was just like, wait, what? What are we doing? And you know? for the record, because I have gotten a few comments, I'm, I'm never going to force Christy to do it. I'm not manipulating Christy to do it. She has the total ability to say no, but we have her on I tape might. saying she's going to do it. No. I just might say no. No, 
No, C. I'm just <laughs> but you can. Bully. You can. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you can say no. I've talked to a couple of people. If the circumstances are right, I have to feel comfortable doing it. We'll We've talk got about it later, Dan. Kendra Patey is willing to jump with you. I know. I know. But she's experienced now. See, this is, I'm very, I'm going to have to think about this. What I do know. You mean? I thought you'd already agreed. I did agree. I have all the re- regret. All and right, we'll, we'll we'll cross that bridge anyway, or jump my... out of that plane at that when the time comes. So this is my official like as of right now. This is my most memorable list right. of. I've anime. got one one more. I, I you know from the more recent history, I really enjoyed the uh, episodes with Ray Harris Jr. You we did four of them, um, and they, they were my my pet episodes because it's the history of World War II is the the podcast that Ray does. And I've really enjoyed that podcast. And so having come on and be able to talk about the Battle of Britain or talk about Pappy Boeington, um, you know, that was really cool. But the episode where the the three of us rated the top five. That was fun. Yeah. The yeah. top five airplanes of World War II, in our opinions. And that was controversial. That was actually the fun kind of controversial, though. Yeah, it was. Because we got so many comments that were like, I can't believe you didn't say this or you didn't. You well, guys the, didn't say I the will DC say this. And- you know, we did not say the 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 uh, C-47, the DC-3. And there is a legitimate argument that that should be in the top five. You know what? I agree. And that's the thing is, um, you know, when people present those things, it really makes you think take a step back and sure. think and and i'm okay with that i'm okay with having dissenting opinions and i'm not saying that people are wrong i think that um we should probably expand the list and and add the c47 slash the dc3 onto it but um especially since after we did that i actually went back and read the history of some of those dc3s that got converted to c47s and then had to get converted back that's a really interesting thing but yeah but yeah, that was a really fun episode, and we should definitely do more of those like listicles. Yeah, yeah, we should. We, we're actually kind of doing one right now. <laughs> yeah, the top five episodes of In the Hangar, according to Dan and Chrissy. I want to know what the viewers, what the audience thinks. They're like, I want to know kind of what their top episodes are. All right, if you're listening to this podcast on YouTube, please um, tell us in the comments um, your favorite In the Hangar episodes. Yeah. Always, and why? Yeah, it's because it's one thing for me to sit here and be like, this is my favorite episode because I experienced it from the host perspective. But from the viewer perspective, I want to know what the people think. Yeah. And I want to thank you guys for supporting us um, these past few years and for building the channel to where we're at today. It, it's it, Without you guys, it wouldn't be anything like this. So Yeah, I agree. All right. And thank you to our sponsors like Colton Mortgage, Colton Taking Off. Um, for your residential mortgage needs. Marshall Protective Services, mpsprotects.com, Z-Vision, the brightest landing and taxi lights out there. 67 Designs. Man, I love their mounts for my airplane. So check them out, 67D.com. Clemensinsurance.net. Jerry at Clemens has saved me a lot of money. I just re up my insurance with him. Also, Flying Eyes. Use our discount code at flyingeyesoptics.com. That code is taking off, all caps, one word for 10% off. And I think you got them all. Did I? I, I think like we just, we need to have like a banner with just all of them so that you can <laughs> list them off. Because once I get past like Flying Eyes and Clemens Insurance and Colton Mortgage, I said them first. Right. I that that's where my brain starts turning to jello. So I'm glad that you got it together. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys. And thank you for supporting our sponsors. It helps support us. And we'll see you guys next time on the taking off podcast. (laughs) 